Hello, I am Tigranish Kenyan from Calculus and Algebra Group uh, at Wolfram. So today I will talk about mathematical functions, new developments, and, uh, and uh, function properties. So here is the abstract that was available in the pathable. Uh, and I will directly turn to the overview of the talk. So first, I'm going to talk about uh, new features in mathematical functions. Uh, then I will turn to holonomic functions, uh, talk about what we have done for 12.2 upcoming, and at the end I will uh, finish my presentation with uh, some examples of uh, analysis, uh, function analysis, with a new functionality that will be in 12.2. Okay, so uh, here is a slide with uh, recent progress uh, in the area of mathematical functions. So we are, of course, constantly improving all the available functionality, as well as developing and implementing some new mathematical functions. Uh, just a couple of notes. So we have updated uh, significantly the documentation pages, the basic example section and scope example section in 12.0 and 12.1. And you can just go to the mathematical functions guide or special functions guide and uh, check different uh, new examples in the documentation uh, pages. Also, uh, starting from 11.3, uh, we are developing a very powerful asymptotic functionality. Um, also, we have implemented five new point functions with their derivatives uh, in version 12.1. And for 12.2, we have uh, improved dsolve. Now it's solving uh, a lot of new examples. Uh, added, implemented two new elliptic functions, and also implemented the family of lama functions uh, that are special functions. Uh, so I will here give a just brief overview on mathematical functions and on the philosophy that we are using. So key idea here is that uh, most of the mathematical functions, uh, elementary functions, special functions, are solutions of uh, ordinary differential equations. And in fact, these differential equations can be uh, used as data structures. So if we, will, if we are working with the differential equations, then we have a lot of additional information that we can use. Uh, for example, uh, we all know that uh, the exponential function is solving this simple differential equation. Uh, the Bessel functions that are very popular and famous are solving a more difficult equation with singular points. And probably the most uh, famous function, special function, mathematical function, is the hypergeometric 2F1 function. That is solving uh, differential equation with three uh, regular singular points. So uh, hypergeometric functions uh, generalize all the simpler mathematical functions. And uh, in fact, hypergeometric functions play the crucial role in the development of, of science during the 20th century. Uh, but of course, there are more advanced, more complex special functions. So the spheroidal functions are examples. They are solving this equation. Uh, in 12.1, we made a big step in this field, implemented the family of Hoyne functions. Uh, that uh, the, the main function of this family is the general Hoyne function, and there are also four confluent forms of it. So the general Hoyne function is solving this equation. And uh, the important point is that Hoyne functions directly generalize all the hypergeometric class of functions, all the functions from hypergeometric class. Like uh, Hoyne G, that is the general Hoyne function, generalizes the uh, hypergeometric 2F1 function, and Hoyne C, that is the single confluent Hoyne function, generalizes the hypergeometric 1F1 function. However, if you will check the list of special functions, there, is, there, there, there was a family of uh, special functions that uh, was missing in Wolfram language. And this uh, was the family of Lamy functions. And as we don't have it uh, them in Wolfram language, then we weren't able to solve the Lamy equation till the version 12.2. Uh, so the Lamy equation is this equation. And uh, in the upcoming version of Wolfram language, uh, we will be able to solve it. And so if you are in general interested uh, in this topic, then you can just check my uh, blog post 
that is, I think that that is well written and rather detailed. Uh, however, as we don't have a lot of time, I will uh, I will skip this and directly go to to the new features in 12.2. So, as I've mentioned, uh, we have implemented LAME functions. Uh, these are two. There are two LAME functions: LAME C and LAME S functions. Uh, also, their primes and uh, two eigenvalue functions, because uh, in fact, uh, in the literature, uh, the Lame equation, uh, we are solving uh, eigen eigenvalue pro problem. So this is a new step in the theory of special functions, because Lame functions are implemented only in Wolfram language, so this will be something new. Um, Matteo functions are their limited limit cases, uh, in fact, Lame functions are members of Hoyne functions family that we have recently implemented. But their uh, importance is that uh, Lame equation and uh, Lame functions uh, solve different problems, a uh, big set of problems from mathematical physics and quantum mechanics. And because of this, we have implemented these functions. So I think that uh, these functions will be rather uh, useful. And also uh, implementing them in 12.2, we will activate the research in this, in this area. As uh, we have already seen that when we have implemented Hoyne functions in 12.1, uh, researchers started using, using them. And uh, in general, the field is activated. Uh, as we don't have a lot of time, I will just give a general overview. So, uh, Lame equation is the following equation. Mm, two Lame functions are implemented, Lame C and Lame S. Uh, so, uh, this equation is solved in terms of Lame C or Lame S, only if this uh, parameter H is specified to Lame eigenvalue A or Lame eigenvalue B. And here is the example of solving this equation. Uh, here are some plots of these functions. Ah, yeah. Uh, interestingly, these Lame functions include uh, sine and cosine functions as special cases when the elliptic parameter in Lame functions, the last parameter, is zero. And this is uh, very easy to understand because the Lame equation is written here. And if this parameter is zero, then this is just an equation for sine and cosine functions. Now I will give some plots of Lamy functions. So this is a plot, uh, the 3D plot of Lamy C. Here will be the plot of Lamy S for different values of uh, elliptic parameter. Uh, these functions are doubly periodic. I will plot them. And uh, this periodicity, uh, the, the period is, depends on the order J, the second parameter of Lamy functions. Uh, some words about the eigenvalues and derivatives. So we, we, we were forced to implement the derivatives, lambda C prime and lambda S prime, because the derivatives of lambda functions are not functions of the same class. And uh, because of this, we've implemented them and their usage is in fact only uh, while calculating the derivatives of lambda functions. So here is the third derivative of lambda s, and here we see lambda s prime. About the eigenvalues, not a lot to say. Uh, here is the plot, and uh, here I am showing that uh, this equ lambda equation is solved only this parameter is specified to lambda eigenvalue a. An inter interesting feature of lambda functions is that there is a connection between lambda functions and Hoenge functions. In fact, lambda functions are proportional to Hoenge functions with uh, specified uh, parameters. And this is because the lambda equation in its algebraic form, here it is, is nothing more than a general Hoenge equation. And uh, we see that if this H is arbitrary, then the equation is solved in Hoenge functions. Uh, now let's turn to the next uh, two new functions, two new elliptic functions. So uh, one function is called uh, Jacobi epsilon. It's an important elliptic integral related to Jacobi dn. Uh, so here is the definition. And uh, one of the, so it, it can be used to calculate derivatives of Jacobi functions with respect to an elliptic parameter. Here it is. 
uh, other applications uh, might be found in the application parts uh, of uh, documentation page of this function. The second function is uh, Jacobi Zn. So here is the definition. And we see that it's uh, re closely related to Jacobi Epsilon function. And here is a very presentable example how we can use this function. So uh, this is a zero energy solution for the following periodic potential for, uh, for the supersymmetric anal analog of uh, this periodic potential. And uh, uh, by direct uh, sub substitution, we can verify this result. So here it is. Uh, for extended discussion of this topic of uh, Jacobi elliptic functions, integrals, and so on, uh, check the guide page because it's, uh, it contains a lot of interesting examples. Okay, next, uh, next improvement uh, is connected with the holonomic functions. So uh, the key idea here is that the, we are giving a possibility to user to define its own special function or sequence, giving just the differential equation, initial values, or the difference equation and initial values. So if the user is interested in some function that is not implemented in Wolfram language, uh, then a uh, user can define its own function and work with it. Uh, also take a look on this nice new type setting that is also implemented for and prepared for 12.2. So here is the, uh, here is the old type setting and here is the new type setting. It's uh, nice and I truly like it. So uh, else we have implemented, we have significantly improved the documentation pages for the differential root and difference root functions. We have implemented a new method of uh, differential root calculations. And here we are using a series-based analytic continuation procedure. Now we have a better performance and a lot of uh, interesting features like parametric derivatives of difference root and also a new type setting that I've already mentioned. Uh, here I will give just a brief uh, functionality, how we can work with these differential root and difference root functions. So for example, if you are solving some equation that is unsolved in non-mathematical functions, then the output will be a differential root object. But however, you can use it uh, just any other mathematical function in Wolfram language. For example, you can calculate some, uh, some uh, values. You can plot this solution. You can uh, calculate the derivative of it. You can make some asymptotic analysis. This is very cool. Uh, also, you can use a function called differential root reduce to, for example, generate the differential equation that is uh, obeyed by Bessel functions, for example. Here you can use here you can use combination of different functions. In any case, you will receive the differential equation and the initial and corresponding initial values. Uh, about difference root. So uh, you can define your own sequence, calculate some, say, 10th term of it. You can generate a function which Taylor expansion is this above given uh, difference, difference root object. And uh, of course, you can verify the result, calculating back the, nth, uh, the series nth coefficient. Uh, this is pre-calculated because it will take some time. Also, you can use difference root reduce now to calculate, for example, the uh, difference equation that is obeyed by Bessel functions, Bessel sequence. Uh, interesting point is that you can also have some parametric sequences, work with them absolutely right in, right, like, like in the same way, um, like another uh, mathematical function or sequence. Okay, uh, so this was about holonomic functions. Uh, and now I will turn to the last part of my presentation that is on function properties. Uh, so this is an impor important improvement for the analysis of function properties. It will be available in 12.2. Uh, there are three general sets of uh, functions that are uh, analyzing the theoretical properties of functions, some analytic properties, and uh, functions like this. So I think that everything is more or less understandable here. And uh, I will uh, show some examples how uh, I'm using this functionality for analysis. Okay, so here uh, I took the 
very simple cosine function. And I am very interested if this function is continuous, is injective, surjective, or bijective. So here will be the output. And of course, plotting this function, we can uh, verify the result. Uh, also, using these function properties, you can get the, uh, get the conditions uh, when the function is continuous, monotonic, analytic, and, and something like this. So for example, let's take a uh, rather complex function like this, difficult function like this, and uh, generate the conditions when it's continuous. So it's continuous when these conditions are um, satisfied. Uh, another example, let's take a uh, function like this and get the monotonic uh, and get the conditions when it's monotonic. So here it is. Uh, of course, you can use the function analytic function to uh, check if this function is analytic. This one is analytic, this one is not. And of course, you can use the plot3D functionality to verify the result. So here we truly see that the first function is uh, analytic, the second one is not analytic. Uh, of course, you can work on a complex domain. Mm, for example, here I'm checking if this function is continuous on a complex domain, and uh, also using the uh, powerful complex plot 3D function to, uh, to verify the result. So we truly see that uh, it's not continuous, and here is the plot of it. We see that there are two singular points. Uh, and uh, you can get, you can uh, use this functionality to generate the set of singular points. For example, I took the um, gamma function and then generating the singular points list, list. So here it is. You can of course use this functionality to get the discontinuities. For example, I took the Bessel function for some uh, parameter, and here is the uh, discontinuity. And I, of course, I can verify the result using complex plot 3D function. So here it is, and uh, this is the origin, and we see that there is a discontinuity going to minus infinity on real axis. Uh, and the last example for today is uh, the case of hypergeometric function. So I'm just uh, taking hypergeometric to f1 function. Uh, plotting it, we know that there is a singular a singularity at one, uh, and just checking that function singularities is giving the correct output. And of course, I can uh, also generate more uh, more general uh, conditions on a complex domain. So here it is. Uh, I will repeat that this is an, uh, in my opinion, this is a very important improvement and will be very useful for uh, both students, researchers, and other individuals from the industry. So in fact, this is all for today. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I'm ready to answer uh, some questions if, if there are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Hello. My name is Galena Filipuk. I would like to ask um, actually a couple of questions to you. Okay. Uh, so first of all, all uh, uh, um, so. Um, uh, all equations that you mentioned at the very beginning, uh, the Hoyne equation, hypergeometric equation, and so on, as a derivative of the Hoyne equation, are examples of, of in general, of, of uh, function equations with certain uh, singular points. Well, well I mean, uh, and of course, and, and there are confident cases. Do, do you plan to implement just the general linear equation and try to classify it or something like this? Uh, in fact, the holonomic uh, dif differential root is doing it. But do you take into account all special values of the parameters that might happen? For instance, at some, uh, at some special values of the parameters, the parent singularity might appear, and for instance, the Hoyne equation, the derivative of the Hoyne equation, I mean, the linear equation might reduce to the Hoyne equation itself, if you see what I mean. Uh, 
uh, for the home case, this, this is done manually, I think, but uh, I, I don't think that uh, we'll do it for the general case. Mm -hmm. um, did you implement any kind of quadratic and in general, uh, say, cubic transformations between, say, hypergeometric functions or between Hoyne and hypergeometric functions, again, which happen uh, for special values of the parameters? Yes, there are some examples that I have implemented. Uh, not all the examples that can be found in the literature, but uh, most important ones are implemented, for sure. Uh, yeah, and uh, what about, um, so you spoke about uh, some asymptotic expansions. Uh, uh, did you um, implement also expansions containing, say, um, logs? Logs? Yeah. No logarithmic, logarithmic functions. And uh, no, no. Yeah, the, the, the problem with Hoyne functions is that they are very general and the, the, the theory for them is uh, not complete. So because of this, there are, there are different articles, but most of the articles are tackling some specific problems, not general problems. And because of this, there is a, some trade-off what to implement and what not to implement. I see. And uh, the last question, um, so you spoke about, in general, about singularities. But uh, mm -hmm. times, uh, say, if we are looking at, at the linear equations, some singularities might be apparent. Yes, so yes. Do you classify somehow, well, I mean, do you eliminate such kind of cases or, or this is you to take some, again, generic values of the parameters? Uh, it, uh, no, we are taking only the general, general values. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I see that Oleg uh, is here. And uh, hello, Oleg. Uh, I have unmuted you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about function branch cut? Uh, I don't see this characteristic in a list of new characteristics. Is continuities or branch cuts? Uh, no, uh, logarithm uh, from Z, a branch cut from minus infinity to z zero. Uh, to show a line where we have branch cuts. Uh, for which functions? For arc sign, for example, for ah. algorithm, for compositions of this. Mm, yeah, I think that you can you can go to the documentation page and uh, take examples from there. It, uh, function side has this characteristic. Yeah, also and also the function side, of course. Yeah, why not implement it yet? Mm. Or gotten. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that Adam can can answer this question. And also, uh, it's nice to have a special um, plotting uh, for branch cuts uh, to show where we have branch cuts for each function. Uh, uh, before my talk, there was a talk on complex visualization, and they were showing uh, very different and uh, very powerful uh, plotting techniques. So more or less, this is done, I think. Not for the old, old functions, of course, but for, for the elementary ones, everything is done, I think. Okay. Okay, so are there some other questions? Well, I've checked this pathable. Uh, it seems that there are no uh, additional questions. Nice talk. Uh, yeah, thank you, Devendra. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, then, if there are no questions, I think that we can stop here. Um, uh, actually, may I have some, one more question? Yes, of course. Uh, do, do you plan to go into some uh, nonlinear special functions? Mm, yes, it will be done what, in future. What, 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 what particular do you plan to implement? Uh, the, ne the next chapter in the Digital Library of Mathematical Functions. <laughs> so which one is that? Uh, plan level fun like, uh, functions. So what, what particular functionality do you plan to implement there? Uh, I don't, I, I cannot say because this is a very, very future thing. But of course there are plans to implement uh, also nonlinear sum equations, functions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, ah, there is a question. 
Yes, I think that Fox H. So the question is about uh, will the Fox H function uh, be implementing? Uh, are we working on this? Yes, probably it will be. Uh, we will start actively working on this after this release, upcoming release. And thank you for your question. Okay, I will wait maybe one more minute for some questions, maybe. And how do you plan to work with movable singularity? and nonlinear equations? Uh, I cannot answer this question at the moment. Okay, thank you. But I know that you are actively working on the topic, so probably I will ask some questions. Yeah, sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, can I say something? Yes, of course. Okay, Fox uh, should come uh, with uh, its important uh, cases. Uh, we have only one case, uh, Mita Kleffler, but uh, other cases like right functions uh, should be there, the analogous of uh, hypergeometric PFQ function. And uh, of course, uh, interesting question uh, you converted uh, these uh, differential roots. Uh, into series mm -hmm. and in many situations such series can be uh, recognized uh, as expansions of already existing functions right like right functions right so, and you will be able to restore and uh, convert this root uh, differential into Bessel and other known functions for us you can yes. go also through mayor g in this procedure. Mm -hmm. Are you doing this uh, or plan to do? Uh, I think that uh, we'll start working on this. Okay, uh, I think that uh, time is more or less over. So uh, once more, thank you everyone uh, for your time and uh, goodbye. Goodbye, very interesting talk. Yes, yes, thank you. Goodbye.